Welcome back, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make use of a toggle switch. And just as a quick note, if you don't have a toggle switch, what you can use instead is just a normal push to close button. And how it works, a toggle switch holds its state. So if I flick that switch to the left, it will stay there. If I flick it to the right, it will stay there. The only difference between this and a button is that a button, a push to close button, for example, has to be held down. There are buttons which um, are push to, uh, push to hold, I believe they're called, or push and hold. I don't remember the name of it, but you simply press them and they hold themselves in place using a spring. If you do not have a toggle switch, you can use a button instead. And how you would mimic a toggle switch would simply be to hold a button down. So, for example, let's say for argument's sake, when I flick this to the left, that is off. For a button, all I would have to do is to hold it down and or release it so right now my button is released because i'm not pressing it if i flick this to the right i simply hold the button down and i'll get exactly the same response so what do i have on this circuit nothing but my raspberry pi i'm going to be making use of the onboard led and i'm going to be making use of the toggle switch here i'm going to jump onto fritzing now and show you guys how this is connected here i have my circuit diagram and I have my toggle switch here. This is a built-in component in Fritzing, so this is not something you have to import. Very handy. I have one of them going to the 3.3 volt. Now, you might be able to use 5 volts as well, but because I didn't have a data sheet for this, the minimum voltage I could get from this was 3.3, so I started off with the minimum voltage first. So again, pin whatever pin this is. If you count from the very edge, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So whatever pin that is, that's a 3. 0.3 volts actually let me open my folder here and go to the pin layout and this is going to be pin 36 to be exact pin 36 gives you 3.3 out you can get 5 volts again from pin 39 and pin 40 but i would su always suggest if you don't have a data sheet always 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 start from the smallest voltage you can get which in this case is 3.3 let me close this what's next uh, okay so i have one pin the first one connected to the 3.3. I have the middle pin connected to the GP, so GP16, I believe in this case. It doesn't really matter which one you use. And I have the third pin connected to ground. Now, as you can see, I have uh, the positive pin as red or the wire as red, the ground pin as black. This is the convention. This is what most people do when they're drawing circuits or creating circuit diagrams. And I have my data pin. It can be any color you want to be fair. It doesn't have to be this color, but typically red is for positive, black is for ground or negative, and any other color for the actual data line. I'm not going to go through all the stuff I've done in previous videos. I'm simply going to show the circuit built first, show the circuit diagram here on Fritzing. Then I'm going to jump over. If I jump over now into uh, Funny, uh, this is what the code looks like. So I'm just going to go through and explain what this does. So from machine import pin, I import the pin functionality so I'm able to use input and output devices. Let me zoom all the way in. And I say import uTime as well. And what uTime does, that simply allows me to pause my program or to sleep. I have my LED object uh, as pin 25. I use pin 25 simply because the Raspberry Pi Pico has an onboard LED and it's automatically always connected to pin 25. That's what they've done. For people using the Raspberry Pi Pico W, all you have to do is to change this 25, put quotes and put LED in uppercase and that would work exactly the same way. So again, this is for people using the Pico W. Let me go back to my original. I have an object called toggle switch and that's connected to pin, I think this should be pin 16 actually, pin 16, it's an input pin so that's why it says pin in here and it's connected to the pull down resistor, the internal pull down resistor built onto the Raspberry Pi. I could have used a pull down, a physical pull down resistor as well but that's extra hassle I don't want to deal with. The pull down resistor, what that does, it simply holds that value to ground at all times no matter what until the switch is flicked just to ensure we don't have any anomalies we could use a pull up resistor as well and that would hold it high and I, and again when the switch is flicked it goes to ground i have my while true loop um, infinite loop is created so the program will run forever once there is electricity once everything is working fine this program will never ever ever stop looping i have started to use try and accept keyboard interrupt reason being 
this will try whatever in here. So if something doesn't work, if something fails, it won't just crash the entire program. What it will do, it will keep trying, it will keep trying. And eventually, if it does start working, perfect. So what do I have in my try? I simply print the toggle switch value at the top of the while loop, just so I know what's actually happening. Then I check, I have two if statements essentially. The first one says, if toggle switch value is equal to one, or if it's on, or if it's true, any one of these would be perfectly fine. Turn the onboard LED on and print on the console, switch is on, LED is on. And I have another if statement or an elif statement here saying, uh, if toggle switch value is equal to zero, print on the console or the shell, sorry, switch is off or LED and LED is off. And I turn the onboard LED off. That's why it says LED value is one here and LED value zero. Zero turns it off and LED uh, value one turns it on. I sleep for 0 0.2 seconds. So that's roughly 20% of a second. And in my accept keyboard interrupt, what this means, if I press exit or if I press a specific key on my keyboard called quit or escape in some cases, the program will stop. When the program stops running or when the main function stops running, what will happen is I will get this printed on screen. So it will say uh, program stopped, switch value was, and it prints the value of the switch so that even if I stop my program, it doesn't give that random red screen error. It always gives, it just gives me the actual last known value of the switch. And then I have break. This simply breaks out of the entire while loop and stops the program. I'm gonna now go onto my circuit and show my code at the same time. Here I have my circuit in front of me and I have my program running on my PC as well. Now apologies for the shaky hands, I don't have my tripod with me. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press F5 on my keyboard just to run this program. And at the bottom, as you can see, it says switch off, LED off on the shell and no lights are turning on here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flick this switch to the left and I see what happens. So let me hold the breadboard down and flick. And there we go. As you can see, the LED came on as soon as I flick the switch. Let's flick it the other way now. Uh, keep an eye on the shell as well. This, it says switch on, LED on. I'm going to flick it the other way again. So bear with me, it's a bit tricky. Flick the other way, switch off, LED off, keeps going back and forth. Now, there are quite a few things that we can do with this. So let's just imagine, I don't know, um, I think one of the past papers, they, there was like a door checking if a door was open. If you had to mimic that, this would be the easiest way to mimic that. You could also use like a laser emitter and transmitter, but this is probably just the easiest way to mimic. So imagine the LED is off now, right? That means the door is closed, let's say. If someone opens the door, the, the switch is gonna be open or closed or whatever the case is. So someone's opened the door, we flick it the other way. Now, if the door is open, the light comes on, uh, there might be a buzzer, there might be a person waiting, or, or sorry, the system might wait to say, okay, it's been 20 seconds, why is the door not closed? If the door is not closed, sound a buzzer, send an email, send a text message, whatever the case is. So quite a few use cases for um, a toggle switch. Keep in mind what the toggle switch does, you simply toggle, you go between states and it holds its states. That's one of the main things about the toggle switch. It will keep holding its state. So no matter how long um, it takes, this will this LED should always be on. This toggle switch will never go to the right until I come and flick it. Whereas with a button, a push to close button, you have to push the button and hold it down for this to happen. So hopefully that was useful to you guys. Thanks for watching.